Ever wonder how much more powerful Einstein Analytics, now called Tableau CRM, can be than out-of-box Salesforce reports? Well, here's your chance to dive into Tableau CRM with Zachary Banks. Welcome to 100 Days of Trailhead, where the tech community comes to learn Salesforce, learn tech, get inspired, and invest in ourselves. We are your trail guides, here to support you on your learning journey. We release videos weekly. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a video. In the description below, you can find links for everything we mention in this video, as well as books and resources we found useful. Visit our blog, 100daysoftrailhead.com, for other helpful Salesforce and tech content. Tableau CRM is a great way to visualize data in your Salesforce instance. Today, Zachary Banks explores his top five tips for Tableau CRM slash Einstein Analytics Zachary is currently a nine-time certified application architect. He lives in Austin, Texas and co-leads the Austin, Texas Administrator Group. His hobbies include his dogs, home improvement, and working on his new blog, techiezack.com. Hi everyone. Thank you for tuning in to my 100 Days of Trailhead video where I'll be talking about Einstein Analytics and just going over a few quick tips. Uh, there, I can talk about so much about Einstein Analytics, it turns out maybe I'll do a longer video in the future. If there's something you want to see, put that down in the comments below. Um, my name is Zachary Banks. You can find me on social media under the alias Techie Zach. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, techiezack.com. I'm a Salesforce technical lead at this moment. Um, nine times certified, and I'm a certified Salesforce application architect, and one of those certifications is Einstein Analytics. I've been using that uh, since 2016, 2017, back when it was Wave Analytics. Fun fact, every three years it rebrands. So it was Edge Spring during the acquisition, changed to Wave Analytics, changed to Einstein Analytics, now it's to Blow CRM. I still call it Einstein Analytics because that's what I've known it as for the most part, but any of those names refer to the same product. Anyways, let's get right in here because we're running out of time. Um, first tip. So the first tip is you should get into a Einstein Analytics developer org. Now, how do you do that? Now, the old fashioned way was um, you would go to this link right here. So if you search sign up for an analytics dev org and go to this link, it would bring you to this form. And if you scroll down, you can actually see there's still um, some uh, assets related to Wave Analytics, but you fill this out and you'll get signed up for a dev org. You can also go to the Trailhead badge and do this badge and get some free points, um, but it, it tells you to go to the same exact link. And you can see there's still some assets in here referring to um, <laughs> Wave Analytics. Um, eventually this will be updated to, uh, to Blow CRM, I hope, but uh, moving on from that. Uh, the next quick tip I have for getting familiar and getting started with Einstein Analytics is opening up a, a Excel workbook or a Google Sheet. Um, you, you don't have to pay for a fancy software like Excel if you can't afford it, um, but get familiar with the table structure. So across the top, these are your columns. Um, and then when you are going, so let me rephrase horizontally across the top, that's your columns. That will correspond to your field names inside of Salesforce, but also fields inside of different tables if you're connecting to different uh, databases, maybe a PostgreSQL database or some other sort of database. And then the individual rows that make this up would be the corresponding record. So for instance, you see here I have 15 digit or 18 digit because the Salesforce record could be 15 or 18 digits. Then I have a field called name and for this uh, specific ID, the name for that record is Zach and the age is 25. Um, and then same thing, 18 digit last name or for name here I have Banks, which is my last name and I have age 28. Neither of those are my age. Um, but anyways, the reason why that's so important is when you start dealing with Einstein Analytics and you start dealing with data flows, uh, you're going to need to understand the underlying structure and you're going to use the Salesforce Developer Guides a lot 
for inherent Salesforce objects, such as um, account, or maybe you're doing reporting off quota, maybe you're doing reporting off of forecast, who knows. Um, but if you don't have the understanding of how the data from Salesforce can translate into a workbook, then you're not really going to have as good of a time. So if you've done data load, then you're familiar with CSV. Just know that, um, excuse me, Einstein Analytics is similar to that, where you need to um, understand how a CSV will translate into Salesforce and thus Einstein Analytics. Okay, uh, next quick tip. Speaking of CSVs, um, this is just a general <laughs> tip um, that carries over to Einstein Analytics well, so I would call that the third tip. Uh, Multi-select pick list. When you have a multi-select pick list, it's going to translate into a cell inside a CSV, something like um, 25, 28, 30, maybe it'll use a comma, depends on the format of the CSV and which database you're getting it out of. But when you start importing that into charts, you're not going to be able to quickly just report on who's uh, 26 or 27 or get those that are just 25 um, because you're going to have multiple values in here. This is a horrible multi-select pick list, but um, you would then need to either worry about outside of Einstein analytics, separating out the data, and you probably can't do that as quickly in a governance of the Salesforce org. Maybe in the CSV you can uh, separate them out uh, when you separate, the, separate it by a delimiter. Um, but in Einstein analytics, you could do a case statement and create uh, custom fields or separate out the values. But just be wary of your multi-select pick list, and if at all possible, um, I try to avoid them. But just know you do have ways to get around them inside of Einstein Analytics. Now, let's see here. Let's pull this back up. Quick tip number four. So when you're building an Einstein Analytics dashboard, think about who's going to be consuming your dashboard. So for instance, this is a lockdown user I have for my community. I conducted a salary survey um, for the Austin, Texas area, and we have different information going on here. And right at the top of the dashboard, you can quickly see the title. You can see I created a border around this to really um, uh, create a design around this to create a spot on the dashboard for um, each component. Who to contact if you have any questions. Um, my title on Twitter is now Techie Zach. It's not Admin Zach. I had Admin Zach for many years. Um, and then I have filters all at the top. So that way users can quickly realize, oh, my filters are at the top. So if they want to filter by product owner job roles, they can quickly click product owner up at the top and all the uh, dashboards below will get that. And if you notice, I have a lot of the uh, filters gray. So I really thought about the design here. So when you're building an Einstein Analytics dashboard, really, you're, you're going to start becoming a user experience expert. You're going to think about the little details on how to best communicate key points. You can see here I have the numbers in white to make it really pop. Um, I'm not sure why this is white and black on here. That's going to bother me but just those little details. And you can see I have the color themes uh, very similar. I purposely set no to be in red because nobody likes no to be in uh, blue or green or um, more commonly CSAT. You don't like to see a good CSAT in red. Uh, executives do not like that. Um, so really think about the design of your charts when you're building an Einstein Analytics dashboard. Um, Let's see, can I do this on here? Haha, I can. Fun fact and another quick tip, bonus tip. Uh, Command E on Mac. Um, I want to say it's Control E on Windows. I use Mac now, so I don't remember. It lets you access the background uh, JSON of the dashboard. And so you can quickly migrate dashboards between environments. You should be using source control and you should be uh, migrate in through that so that way you get a backup. But if you're quickly moving stuff between environments, want to see how it interacts, 
You can copy the entire dashboard's JSON, just bear in mind you should have all of your uh, data sets uh, correlated across each environment. Last tip for today is to not put everything into one Einstein Analytics data flow. In computer science, it's good to practice development and other categories practice separation of concern. So when one area or component of your data flow fails, you don't shut down your business because now everything is not populating with the new data. Um, so for instance, uh, you might not want to put all of your sales department in one data flow. If you're a huge enterprise, you may want to separate out forecasts into a separate data flow. And if you're big enough, possibly separate out the different teams into a different data flow to populate different charts. Um, really depends on your size and what your governance should look like. But to recap the five quick tips we talked about, getting started, sign up for a developer org and start playing, um, really get familiar with the CSV format um, because that correlates to the tables in Salesforce. Multi-select pick lists, avoid them, but if you cannot avoid them, then you can fix them inside of Dataflow, but that is more advanced for this video. Uh, don't put everything into one data flow. Think about user dashboard design, command E, or I believe control E on Windows to access the background JSON. And I said don't put everything in one data flow. Ah, user experience. Think about the end user consuming your dashboard. And thank you for tuning in for this version of 100 Days of Trailhead, and I think I am right on time. If you want to see something specific about Einstein Analytics, feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, I'm very thankful to be asked to uh, participate in this. Um, you can also reach out to me on all my social media, at TechieSack. And have fun, learn something new on Trailhead, and thank you, Trailblazer community. Bye-bye. And with that, we're at the end. What business case have you used Flow to solve? Comment below. We would also love to hear what video topics you want us to cover in future videos in the comments. If you've made it to this point, we want to take an opportunity to say thank you. Since you've stayed with us, here's a bonus. The biggest way to understand Einstein Analytics, or Tableau CRM now, is to understand the table structure of Salesforce and your connected data. I referenced the developer guide so much when working with Tableau CRM slash Einstein Analytics. Thank you for spending time with us. Please like and subscribe to our channel because we share weekly content to support your tech and Salesforce learning journey. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss a new video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. Connect with us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and on 100daysoftrailhead.com, all of which are listed below. Thank you for learning with us, and we'll see you back tomorrow.